All right, so one very important um, aspect of all molecules is whether or not they are polar or nonpolar. Um, that will dictate a lot of their physical properties. And determining whether or not a molecule is polar or not starts with a discussion of electronegativity. Now, electronegativity can be defined as an atom's attraction for electrons in a bond. Okay, and so it turns out that um, if we look at a periodic table, um, electron or atoms to the uh, left, as we go left to right, have an increasing um, electronegativity. Uh, and that has to do with the number of uh, protons and what's known as the effective nuclear charge. But as uh, we go from left to right, all of the electrons are in the same energy level, but the number of protons is increasing, and so that's increasing its effective nuclear charge, which attracts, uh, has increases the attraction for the electrons. Um, as you go from the bottom to the top, atoms actually get smaller, and so electrons can get closer to the nucleus of the individual atom, and so fluorine has a higher electronegativity than chlorine, because it is smaller and electrons in the bond can get closer to the nucleus which increases its electronegativity or its attraction for those electrons. So it also increases as we go from bottom to top. So a general trend is from the bottom left of the periodic table to the top right electronegativity increases. Okay, And so what that has an effect on is if you have say a bond between two atoms with different uh, electronegativities. So let's say hydrogen fluoride or HF. Okay. Fluorine is very electronegative. In fact, it is the uh, most electronegative atom on the periodic table. Uh, why wouldn't uh, helium or neon have a higher electronegativity? And that, of course, is if we think about the definition of electronegativity, it's uh, attraction for electrons in a bond. And we know that the noble gases aren't going to form bonds with other atoms because they already are very stable. So HF is very electronegative. Um, helium, or excuse me, hydrogen, is not. It's sort of in the middle, not very electronegative, uh, sort of average. And so what this means is that electrons in the bond are attracted to fluorine more than hydrogen. Okay, and so if we drew an electron cloud or an electron density map, basically just the area where we're going to find electrons uh, in this uh, molecule, it would look something like this. Where the area or the volume of electron density is much higher around the fluorine, am, uh, fluorine atom because electrons are attracted to the fluorine atom more, and so they that tend to spend more time near the fluorine atom. Okay? What this sets up is essentially the around this fluorine atom is a net excess of electrons. There's extra electrons around the fluorine atom as opposed to the hydrogen atom. So what happens is that this fluorine atom or this molecule, this bond, creates a partial negative charge. not a full charge, it doesn't become an ion, it just sets up a small excess negative charge because of the increased electron density. And because there's a lack of electrons by the hydrogen atom, the nuclear charge is actually uh, observable, and so this sets up a partial positive charge. And so, 
um, we can display that by using um, <coughs> the lower crate lower case Greek letter Delta so we have a partial positive charge by the hydrogen atom and a partial negative charge by the fluorine because again those electrons are attracted to it and just happen to be there most of the time all right since this uh, bond has two different ends uh, this is called a polar covalent bond so when you think of poles you think of magnets there are two different ends of a magnet a north end and a south end well there can actually be two ends of well there are two ends of electric fields there's a positive uh, end of the electric field and a negative and so these are the two poles of the electric field and so that's sort of where the name uh, polar comes from the two different uh, poles of the electric field and this is an observable uh, measurable charge on this HF uh, molecule that sets up this polar bond. Okay, uh, so it turns out that there's going to be three types of bonds that occur uh, because of the differences in electronegativity. It turns out that there, if the electronegativity uh, difference is so large that the um, electrons are no longer shared they're taken by the most electronegative atom that is what sets up the ionic bond and this is usually between a metal and a non-metal and if you're using the actual values this is where the ch the difference or change in electronegativity is greater than 2.0 if you actually do the calculations but in this course and most general chemistry courses you can just assume that a metal and a non-metal are going to form an ionic bond is that always the case no metals can form covalent bonds but that's a, a good uh, safe simple assumption for uh, introductory courses if the electronegativity difference is not a size 2 but still <coughs> big enough to uh, set up partial charges that of course is what we just discussed the polar bond and this is when the uh, uh, the uh, difference in electronegative value is less than um, 2.0 I want to write that correctly um, the difference in electronegativity is less than 2.0 but greater than 0.4 and those are just the general guidelines um, this is um, usually when a non-metal is bonded to a very electronegative atom like nitrogen oxygen fluorine or chlorine if you ever wanted to be absolutely sure you can <coughs> do the calculation but as long as they're not bonded to themselves, i.e. if fluorine is bonded to fluorine, there's no electronegativity difference. If it's a different nonmetal that's bonded to one of these four atoms, it's uh, usually uh, polar. And then, of course, we could have nonpolar bonds. And this is when the uh, change in electronegativity or the difference in electronegativity between the two atoms is... Um, 0.4 or less less than or equal to 0.4 and so uh, some very important nonpolar bonds that we'll, we'll come across in this uh, course is of course the hydrogen carbon bond this is a value of 0.4 but is nonpolar meaning that there's no difference in electronegativity between the two atoms or there's a difference in electronegativity but it's not observable whereas no charge uh, sets up so there's not going to be any partial negative or partial positive charges on this bond <clears throat>